about? What bit you? What kind of snake? What kind of snake, Jenny? Oh hell, Mojave Green. Call 911. Call 911. I literally got out of the car, had stuff in my hand to go hang up on this wall. Didn't hear anything, didn't see anything. And then I feel two little knives go into my foot. And it took me like, you know, I looked down and then I see this rattlesnake coiled up and I jump back and then it rattles. I'm trying to breathe through it. It was excruciating pain. Like I didn't anticipate the pain just starts, I mean, your foot is, my foot was throbbing. It just kept working its way up. I'm trying to stay calm. A rattlesnake bite is among the most terrifying and deadly snake bites anyone can experience. In this video, we'll explore one of the most iconic and feared reptiles of the desert southwest, the Mojave rattlesnake. Don't try this at home. We're milking Mojave rattlesnakes for a research project we're doing where we're studying their venom. Whoa. <laughs> Holy crap. Before sharing stories of individuals who have encountered Mojave rattlesnakes, both in terms of observing them in the wild and experiencing bites, one question remains, what kind of snake is a Mojave rattlesnake? The Mojave rattlesnake, scientifically known as Crotalus scutulatus, is a venomous pit viper species native to the Mojave Desert and surrounding areas. It is renowned for its potent venom and characteristic rattle, which serves as a warning to potential threats. Physically, the Mojave rattlesnake is identifiable by its triangular-shaped head, vertical pupils, and heat-sensitive pits located between the nostrils and eyes. These pits allow the snake to detect infrared radiation emitted by warm-blooded prey, aiding in hunting and navigation. Habitat-wise, Mojave rattlesnakes are primarily found in arid desert regions with sparse vegetation, rocky outcrops, and sandy soils. So bites from Mojave rattlesnakes can actually take two forms because different populations have different sorts of venom. So some of them have a high neurotoxin. They're generally called type A venom. Uh, and that's the ones that we have. Um, and we do know that ours are the neurotoxic ones because a, they were collected from the correct areas for that venom, but also they've been tested, so we know that's what we have. And uh, there are some that have a type B venom that is more like your traditional rattlesnake hemorrhagic uh, cytotoxic venom. They are particularly well adapted to the harsh conditions of the Mojave Desert, where they can be found seeking shelter in rocky crevices or burrows during the heat of the day. Behaviorally, Mojave rattlesnakes are typically solitary and nocturnal, although they may become more active during cooler periods of the day. They are ambush predators, relying on stealth and camouflage to capture their prey, which primarily consists of small mammals, lizards, and birds. Now, let's dive into the venom of the Mojave rattlesnake and its effects on both prey and humans. The venom of this species is a complex cocktail of toxins designed to immobilize and incapacitate its prey. Mojave rattlesnake venom primarily contains neurotoxins, which target the nervous system, and hematoxins, which affect the blood and tissues. These toxins work synergistically to disrupt vital physiological functions in the snake's prey, leading to paralysis, tissue damage, and ultimately death. In prey animals, Mojave rattlesnake venom induces rapid paralysis and immobilization, allowing the snake to safely consume its meal. For smaller prey, such as rodents or lizards, the venom acts quickly, ensuring a swift and efficient kill. However, when Mojave rattlesnakes encounter humans, the effects of their venom can be devastating. A bite from a Mojave rattlesnake can lead to severe pain, swelling, tissue necrosis, and systemic effects such as nausea, vomiting, and difficulty breathing. Immediate medical intervention is crucial in treating Mojave rattlesnake envenomation. Anti-venom therapy, along with supportive care, can help neutralize the effects of the venom and prevent further complications. 
Now, let's take a closer look at the physical characteristics that make the Mojave rattlesnake such a distinctive and formidable predator of the desert. Mojave rattlesnakes exhibit a wide range of color variations, ranging from pale beige or gray to shades of brown, tan, or olive green. This variation in coloration allows them to blend seamlessly into their desert surroundings, providing camouflage and protection from predators. One of the most distinctive features of the Mojave rattlesnake is its triangular-shaped head, which houses a pair of large venom glands and sharp, hollow fangs used for injecting venom into prey. In addition to its head shape, the Mojave rattlesnake possesses specialized heat-sensitive pits located between the nostrils and eyes. These pits detect infrared radiation emitted by warm-blooded prey, allowing the snake to accurately pinpoint the location of its potential meal, even in complete darkness. Mojave rattlesnakes are typically medium-sized snakes, ranging from 2 to 4 feet in length, although some individuals may grow larger. Their bodies are cylindrical and covered in keeled scales, providing traction and flexibility for movement across sandy terrain. Now, let's explore the diet and feeding habits of the Mojave rattlesnake, shedding light on how this reptile sustains itself in the harsh desert environment. Mojave rattlesnakes are opportunistic predators with a diverse diet that includes small mammals, such as mice, rats, and ground squirrels, as well as lizards, birds, and occasionally other snakes. They are skilled ambush hunters, relying on stealth and patience to capture their prey. When hunting, Mojave rattlesnakes typically lie in wait, coiled and concealed among rocks or vegetation, patiently awaiting the approach of unsuspecting prey. Once a suitable target comes within striking distance, the snake will lunge forward with lightning speed, delivering a swift and precise strike. Upon striking, Mojave rattlesnakes inject venom into their prey, quickly immobilizing it and preventing escape. They then use their powerful jaws to grasp and manipulate the prey, swallowing it whole once it has been subdued. After consuming a meal, Mojave rattlesnakes may retreat to a sheltered location to digest, a process that can take several days depending on the size of the prey. During this time, they remain relatively inactive, conserving energy until their next hunting opportunity arises. Breeding in Mojave rattlesnakes typically occurs in the spring, shortly after emerging from winter dens. During this time, male snakes engage in intense combat rituals to compete for access to females, with the victors earning the right to mate. Once a male successfully courts a female, mating takes place, often lasting several hours. Following copulation, the female retains the sperm until the conditions are favorable for fertilization allowing her to delay gestation if necessary. The gestation period of Mojave rattlesnakes typically ranges from five to seven months, with variations based on environmental factors such as temperature and prey availability. The gestation period of Mojave rattlesnakes typically ranges from five to seven months, with variations based on environmental factors such as temperature and prey availability. During this time, the female undergoes physiological changes to support the development of her offspring. As the gestation period progresses, the female's abdomen becomes visibly swollen as the embryos grow within her. She may seek out warm, sheltered locations to bask and regulate her body temperature, ensuring optimal conditions for the development of her offspring. In late summer or early fall, the female Mojave rattlesnake gives birth to live young typically ranging from four to 10 offspring per litter. The newborn snakes are fully developed and capable of independent survival from birth, although they may remain in the vicinity of their mother for a short time. Now, let's hear real life stories of encounters with the Mojave rattlesnake, providing insight into the challenges and dangers of coexisting with this iconic dessert predator. Once we figured out what kind of a snake that it was that bit her, we realized the severity of what she was going through. And I was bit by the world's deadliest rattlesnake, the Green Mojave. 
There's all kinds of things that get into your bloodstream tissue that's dissolved from the venom at the, at the bite site. With a rattlesnake bite, um, they can be hemotoxic or neurotoxic. So they can affect your bloodstream and they can affect your nervous system. You know, that venom is made to liquefy its, ro you know, it, its prey. Well, that's doing the same thing at the bite site and those tissues start getting in your bloodstream and your kidneys can't handle it. Sometimes there would be blood work that would come back and it would say, hey, everything's happening normally. And then two or three hours later, there would be new blood work that would come out and it would say, hey, this is elevated or that's elevated or this has changed. And they informed me pretty quick about what was going on, what to expect. I felt like someone took a rock and just like threw it at my leg and then I kind of like lost my balance. And like, I kind of looked down for a second and I saw a snake. And at first like an ambulance came out and fire trucks and then a helicopter flew in and flew me to the hospital. Studying Mojave rattlesnakes in their natural habitat is both thrilling and challenging. Over the years, Wildlife biologists have had countless encounters with these snakes, from observing their hunting behavior to tracking their movements using radio telemetry. Well, the Mojave's venom is neurotoxic, and what that means is it affects your nerves and stops your breathing. Dr. Bush's encounters with these snakes provides valuable insights into their ecology and behavior, helping us better understand and conserve this iconic desert species. These real-life encounters with the Mojave rattlesnake serve as poignant reminders of the importance of respect and caution when exploring the desert wilderness. Whether observing them from a safe distance or responding to a snake bite emergency, understanding and appreciating these magnificent reptiles is essential for coexisting harmoniously with nature in the Mojave Desert. Now, let's confront the terrifying reality of a Mojave rattlesnake bite and explore the symptoms, treatment, and long-term effects associated with envenomation. A Mojave rattlesnake bite can have devastating immediate effects on the human body. Within minutes of being bitten, victims may experience intense pain, swelling, and discoloration around the bite site. Systemic symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and difficulty breathing can also occur, indicating the spread of venom throughout the body. And predictably, we've got a snake bite patient. And this time it's a seven-year-old girl. She's bitten on the ankle by what sounds like a Mojave rattlesnake. It's up in Lucerne Valley. She doesn't have a lot of swelling so far, but the swelling can be deceptive after Mojave rattlesnake bite because they usually don't get a lot of swelling. They just get systemic neurological toxicity, and it's a very dangerous snake. The venom of the Mojave rattlesnake contains potent neurotoxins and hematoxins, which target the nervous system, blood, and tissues. Neurotoxins can cause paralysis and respiratory failure, while hematoxins can lead to tissue necrosis, organ damage, and coagulopathy. Immediate medical intervention is crucial in treating Mojave rattlesnake envenomation. The first step is to immobilize the affected limb and keep the victim calm to slow the spread of venom. Emergency medical services should be contacted immediately and the victim should be transported to the nearest medical facility as quickly as possible. Upon arrival at the hospital, treatment typically involves the administration of antivenom, which works to neutralize the effects of the venom and prevent further tissue damage. Supportive care including pain management, hydration, and monitoring of vital signs, may also be provided to ensure the patient's recovery. While many snake bite victims recover fully with prompt medical treatment, some may experience long-term complications such as tissue scarring, nerve damage, and psychological trauma. Rehabilitation and therapy may be necessary to address these issues and restore the victim's quality of life. As we wrap up our exploration of the Mojave rattlesnake, let's arm ourselves with practical knowledge and safety tips to minimize the risk of encounters and ensure preparedness in the event of a snake bite. First and foremost, awareness and vigilance are key. When hiking or exploring in snake country, keep an eye out for potential hiding spots such as rocks, brush piles, and tall grass where Mojave rattlesnakes may seek shelter. 
Wearing appropriate clothing and footwear can also reduce the risk of snake bite. Long pants, sturdy boots, and leather gloves provide an additional layer of protection against accidental encounters. When hiking or walking in snake-prone areas, use a hiking stick or trekking pole to probe ahead and check for hidden snakes before proceeding. Additionally, stick to well-traveled paths and avoid walking through dense vegetation where snakes may be lurking. In the unfortunate event of a Mojave rattlesnake bite, remember to stay calm and seek immediate medical help. Immobilize the affected limb, keep it at or below heart level, and remove any tight clothing or jewelry that may impede blood flow. Do not attempt to suck out the venom or apply tourniquets, as these methods can do more harm than good. Instead, focus on getting to a medical facility as quickly as possible for proper treatment. By staying informed and following these safety tips, we can all enjoy the beauty of the Mojave Desert while respecting its resident wildlife, including the Mojave rattlesnake. Remember, prevention is key, but preparedness is essential. Stay safe and happy exploring. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more wildlife insights, adventure tips, and educational content. Until next time, happy trails. The other thing I have to feel like I have to point out with these snakes, just because it annoys me personally, is sometimes these are called Mojave Greens. And I have to say that annoys me because they're not green. Green mambas are green. Green tree pythons are green. It is, I guess, you can see a little bit of a greenish tinge in some individuals of these snakes, but I don't understand why some people think it's enough to actually call them that. It doesn't make sense to me.